Hi, in this video we're going to create this procedural snow shader in Blender. So, stay tuned until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I have three objects in the scene that I want to apply the final shader to. Make sure EV is selected, then switch to render mode. By enabling ray tracing, I can achieve better quality. I have explained ray tracing and EVNX in detail in the tutorial here. Let's open the shader editor. Let's rename the shader. I'll apply the shader to the sphere for now. Snow should appear on the top of the object, and when the object is rotated, the snow should move accordingly. Press Shift A and search for the attribute node. This gives me the different attributes related to the current object. Press Ctrl Shift click on the node to see the preview. Next, I need a vector transform node. I need to change the transform type from world to object. And the second type should be changed to world. Next, I need a separate node to get only the Y axis. I want to apply the snow on the top, so I think I need to access the Z axis. I have a problem, I need to insert position in the name field. Alternatively, I can search for the position node, which gives me an attribute node with the name property already filled. As you can see, the result on the z-axis shows black and white points. I need to apply snow on the white areas and rotating the object shouldn't change anything. With a contrast node, I can adjust the intensity and coverage of the snow area. The bright value has a bigger impact on the intensity of the snow area. Now I need to add the logic so that in the white areas a color like white is applied and in the black areas the diffuse texture is used. So I need a mixed color node. Connect the snow detector to the factor. A is the known snow areas where I can apply a color or a diffuse texture. And for B, which is the snow, I'll choose a white color. But I have a problem. The room of the snow should be a bit noisy, but it's smooth right now. To add this effect, I need to include a noise node. I need to adjust the scale. And other attributes as well. Next, I need a math node. Now the noise effect has been added to the snow area. As you can see, this operation works better. I need a multiply operation to control the noise intensity. Now I just need to adjust the values to achieve the best result for each object. Alright, our work is nearly done with the base color. Let's now work on the normal and roughness. The snow area should appear wet and also crunchy. For the roughness, I need a mix node.
I'll call the snow area SA from now on. Connect the SA to the factor. A is the default roughness, which I'll connect the roughness map later. And B should be wet. Connect it to the roughness input. Now, as you can see, the SA is wet. Okay, roughness is done. Let's add a mix color for the normal map. The normal map is not grayscale, so it should use a mix color. To convert the noise node to normal, I need a normal map node. In this case, I need to connect the color output to the normal map. And then connect the output of the normal map to B. And SA should be connected to the vector. Finally, connect the result to the normal. It's working, but I need to connect something to the A input. Duplicate the normal node. And connect the empty normal map node to the A input. As you can see, some grunge has appeared. We can adjust it using the strength value. To use this logic for other objects, I need to group all these nodes. Select all the nodes and press Ctrl G. This small node is my group. Press tab to go inside the group. Now we can use this group in all materials. To add textures to the shader and to use input pins for the group and connect them to each node I want. Select the group and press N to open the settings. Next, in the group section, we can define the pins. These are the outputs. Press the plus button and define the input pin. I need to change its type to color as I want to assign a texture to it and I'll name it Diffuse. Now I need to connect this pin to the place where I want to use the diffuse map. Instead of a blue color, I'm now using a texture. I need another input for roughness. I should connect it right here. For the normal map, I need a different type. I need to use a vector type. It's better to change the color tag to texture. Finally, I need to define a float input to control the snow intensity. I should connect it to the multiply node that I connected the noise to, then press tab to close the group. Now I can connect textures to the input pins that appeared. The output pins don't have names, let's rename them. Next rename the group to snow shader. Press tab to exit. Now I can search for the snow shader and use it wherever I want. Let's use it in the other materials. These are the textures related to the container object, which I downloaded from Quixel Bridge. Add the snow shader. First, I need to add the diffuse map to the project. Next, I need to add the roughness map and make sure the color space is set to non-color. Next is the normal map. It should be set to non-color and I also need to connect it to the normal map node. Then connect the snow shaders outputs to the final shader.
Now I can adjust the snow using the snow value. As you can see, this is a great way to avoid creating separate snow textures, allowing us to add snow to the objects dynamically. Maybe we can improve it by changing the map operation to add. Alright, let's create a shader for the other object too. This is the final shader, you can easily add more features to it. And if you know other ways to create procedural snow, share them in the comments. You can also download this shader at store.blackhip.com. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please give a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your questions and ideas in the comments.